Hello, hello, and welcome along to episode one of Soulforged, the true campaign. Uh, we had a pre-campaign, and in that pre-campaign, our wonderful heroes ventured far into Scrandia to the northwest uh, to rescue a princess from the harem of the evil Shikar Manjar deer. And in doing so, became heroes of the realm, got some camels, rode a desert worm, beat up a kraken, met some pirates, drank some beer, and victory. Um, this is about 18 months ago. They have since returned as heroes of the realm. But before we get into that, let's meet the players. Today, I have playing with me, Jay. <laughs> so Caught you by surprise, didn't it? Yeah. Uh... God, I'm so off put today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Start again. Today, I... I have Jay. Yeah, hi, I'm Jay. I'm playing uh, Kylan Azareth. Uh, the uh, Triton Eloquence Bard Order Cleric. I have Josh. Hi, I'm Josh. Uh, I will be playing Luca Wicks, uh, the Fox and Mathropomorph. Um, oh my. Drake Fox Warden Man. Ranger um, <laughs> with his uh, best friend Vero. I. Don't think I do have Michaela. So I did. Have I just send in squares. Yeah, okay, you did. Yeah. You you fix your squares. Uh, I have a Laura. Yeah. Um, I'm Alora. I'm playing Karina, the Chronergy Wizard. Cool. Hi, I'm still here. Oh, um, <laughs> I have Jamal. Hey guys, Jamal here. I won't be playing an anthropomorph character. I'm going to be playing Galtac <laughs> Bonebreaker, Goliath, a Juggernaut Barbarian. And I have Michaela. Do I? I do, right? Yeah. Oh, right? What no, just no. happened? <laughs> oh my god. Technical issues from the jump. Uh, okay, let me try. I have a faceless I Michaela. A facing Michaela. Yes, hello. Go, I don't go. know. Quick, you're on a time. Michaela here, <laughs> playing uh, Winona Baralite, the deep gnome rogue slash artificer. And indeed, that is where we will start. Um, Winona. Uh, what exactly is this artificer level doing in your character sheet? Um, over the last 18 months, what have you been doing? Well, I will tell you. Um, Winona was very interested in those mystical magical items we found within the body of, um, those, those large beasts. And, um, you know, I feel like her parents are business people. She's a business person at heart, and she's noticed, like, a hole in the market for, uh, it seems like no one's making magical items, so that's kind of what she's been trying to learn to do in this break. She's got a little experience with, uh, artificing in that time, as she went down to the Underdark, trying to discover more about, um, this gem, and yeah, that's sort of what she's been working on this whole time. It's pretty cool. Um, and you were also experimenting and making an item for yourself, is that correct? Yeah. Um, what did you manage to make? This whole time, uh, uh, well, as I said, she's from a family of jewelers. So she made a little ring. Where is it? The merchant's watchdog that um, alerts the wearer whenever a illusion or enchantment spell is cast within 15 feet of them just a little minor thing but she's been studying hard all this time and that is the uh result of her effort oh by the way did i learn anything about that uh that obsidian gemstone that whole time while i was uh, studying up no so each of your items obviously you each gained a magical item from the crack um, which seemed oddly specific to your characters. Perhaps fate was intervening in your way. Um, as yet, uh, they haven't revealed any extra powers. Um, though Winona, you have identified it indeed as obsidian. Um, yeah. But it, as you remember, it's too perfect, right? It's, it's magically created obsidian, uh, not mined obsidian. But other than that, no, no extra secrets as yet. Um, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, speaking yeah. of magic and cool magic stuff, um, oh, actually, before that, let's tell an anecdote. Uh, that merchant's watchdog ring, um, 
I think, Josh, was it you that had it for like 15 sessions before it did anything? <laughs> and then you bumped into a random illusion and were like, wait, is anything happening to me with this ring? And I was like... Yeah, like we, I got it very early in uh, the campaign and we, I, me and everyone else forgot about it. And we were traveling through the woods and James was like, oh, there's... You know, he was hinting that something was around, but we didn't know. And we were investigating, and we were like, is there any magic here? And then, out of nowhere, it clicked in my head that I had that ring. <laughs> I was like, if there's any illusion magic, I should be vibrating right now. This is what I suspect will happen. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, I, I suspect also it will be episode 91, it will be level yep. 19. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, my ring, finally, like, paying ah, off. Yes, there's an invisible person somewhere near here. Um, anyway, all is planned. Said magical things. I believe that uh, Karina, you went adventuring looking for. Um, I keep playing the wrong track. Uh, looking for information. Is that correct? That's correct. And where did you go, and what were you looking for? She went back down to the Pirate Isles after having visited there before, because she knew that her mother was from that area, but didn't really have any information other than that. That is where her father met her mother. Indeed. And as you were passed on from pillar to post and person to person, eventually you uh, came across a, an old, new new old friend, I guess, um, as Captain Dathrum um, sort of bumped into you. And he, when asking your questions, uh, you were pointed to a place um, known as Marzella's House of Desires. Uh, when you arrived, you were met by a buxom woman uh, in her late 60s. Um, with sort of graying dark red hair. Human. Um, you could see that she was once a great beauty of her time, but now less so. Um, and uh, in seeking information about Angel, um, you were able to find out quite a lot, to be honest. In fact, she sat you down and told you the whole story um, of Angel. Angel was a renowned courtesan. Angel is uh, Karina's mother. Um... Angel uh, was a renowned courtesan in the Pirate Isles, known as much for her sharp tongue and sense of justice as she was for her stunning looks and exclusive clientele. But Angel's story begins with far more mundane roots. Uh, born to Karina Elson um, in Escrandia, uh, Angel was born into slavery. Her mother, a beautiful lady in her own right, was a slave in the harem of Dekaros. Uh, when she was first born, Angel was called by a different name, Niamar, uh, which is a beautiful flower in the desert thrives despite the hardships in those areas. Uh, Niamar bloomed just as her namesake into a beautiful girl who was well liked within the harem. And the sheik's son at the time, Aban, grew very fond of her. It is said that he did not call on her as uh, he would most girls in the harem. Simply as one might call it a booty call. Uh, but instead courted her as a wife with gifts of flowers and wine and soft spoken gentle words. Uh, there was somewhat of an age and when he came of age at 18 he greatly wished for Niamar to become his wife. Uh, Niamar, however, wanted desperately to return to the lands that her mother spoke of far to the south. Lands such as Jamalia City and the Spice Isles. Uh, beautiful islands and strange cities and the ocean. Her mother spoke often to her of the ocean. And she had grown up there on the islands until she was captured and enslaved as a youth by passing pirates and sold off as a slave to Scrandia. Uh, Niamar told Aban many times of these dreams and Aban's father, Dekeros, was very insistent that Aban's first wife be a woman who brought him both fortune or power. Um, and as such, and as an act of unusual love and altruism for the son of a sheik, who usually tend to be quite harsh um, in the desert, Aban saved up gold to commission a freedom earring for Niamh. In a Scrand era, uh, rare is the slave that is freed. Um, it was much because of the cost of doing so, because of breaking the tradition. Uh, every slave in a Scrand era is marked so with a tattoo. Um, these can be relatively small or large, and indeed many of the women in the harem have m very minor tattoos but they are usually on the face or at least on the neck or somewhere that's visible and difficult to hide. As such, even when a slave is freed, um, they would be seen as a runaway slave, um, unless a slave wore a freedom earring. A cunningly wrought web of silver metal over a jewel, the color of the house that the sheik releasing the slave belongs to. Nobody who isn't a sheik can afford to release a slave. These jewels are incredibly expensive. Um, those few slaves that are freed often keep these earrings in their family for many generations. Um, as such, Dekeros was furious when he found what his son had done and was so powerless to prevent what is sacred tradition in Scrandia. So Niamar was freed. It is said that Aban called her his angel, and indeed that is the name she took when she left. Um, she headed south to find the oceans her mother had told her about. Uh, said mother died quite soon after she left, though 
uh, Angel was not to hear of this. In fact, uh, Marzella heard of it long after the death of Angel. Um, and she made her way all the way to the ocean. We're in a small harbor town in the Pirate Isles. She made her fame as one of the most beautiful courtesans of the Pirate Isles. Working for Marzella in the House of Delights, Angel's fee and fame was such that she could choose her clients and always brought enough coin in to satisfy her mistress and make her own life comfortable. Eventually, though, she began to refuse all clients other than one, for she had fallen in love. And that client didn't put in support very often. Marcus Braxton was a wealthy man, but not overtly so. As Angel refused client after client, he began to have to pay higher and higher fees for her. Angel become known, became known as Marcus's woman within Marzella's house, and soon clients even stopped trying to ask for her, knowing that she was unavailable. Instead, perhaps seeking Marcus's demise as a way to make Angel available once more. Um... Marzella came to Angel and talked to her about becoming Marcus's woman and how this could be an issue for the for the house in a way, but uh, Angel was very proud of being Marcus's woman, and in fact she removed her little wizardwood charm that had been keeping her from getting pregnant without telling Marcus. And as such, uh, a little while later on his next visit into port, he fathered upon her a child, though he didn't know. Um, and as he set back out to sea, uh, Angel was very pleased with the knowledge that within her belly grew a child that was theirs to share. However, nine months later, when Marcus returned into port, or ten or eleven months later, when Marcus returned into port, he found that no longer was Angel at Marzella's because Angel had passed away in childbirth. So, left to him was a tiny babe, a daughter, Karina. As such, he took the girl on the boat, and well, the rest, as we know, is history. Uh, Marcus still wears the earring um, of Angel's freedom in his ear, um, swearing that he will never take another woman, but wait instead to be reunited with Angel, the flower of the desert in the afterlife. Uh, Karina, however, when you visited Marzella, she gives you this small wizardwood charm, uh, carved in the like of a, a fetus, almost, um, a curled babe in upon itself. Um, and it's tiny, only perhaps a centimetre across and usually is worn in the navel uh, to prevent pregnancy. They're incredibly expensive to commission. Uh, you know you are with a very fine courtesan when she wears a wizard with charm. They also ward off the diseases that can be associated with the trade of the light. Uh, apart from that, you found no other knowledge and were able to travel back. You also would have come across your father at that point somewhere, somehow, some way, um, and he will give you a... Uh, a small glass bottle, which in turn you can um, get enchanted and gain some components uh, with, and in your studies, uh, manage to turn it into what is effectively a ship in a bottle. Um, this ship uh, is your father's ship, um, and you're able to see when it is in port or when it is in uh, out to sea, and the weather is in the area, and if in port, you may be able to make out exactly which port it is. The ship always faces the direction away from you that the ship is, um, so acting like a compass as well towards your father's ship. That was a lot of words, sorry. <laughs> I hadn't realized it was so that long. So much more information than I was expecting. <laughs> I didn't, didn't realise it was so long. Um, there is quite a lot of useful lore in there, but for now, um, we will bear it down to two simple things. Uh, a slave wears a small tattoo on their face. Um, if they're a slave of the Scrandia, and if they are, uh, are made free, they must wear a freedom earring, um, a net of silver uh, over a single gem. And wizardwood charms are worn by courtesans to prevent diseases of the trade, and also to prevent childbirth. Uh, or pregnancy, I suppose, not to prevent childbirth. Well, preventing one usually does prevent the other. Um, apart from that, Karina, yeah. is there anything else you've been up to in your time away? <laughs> I think that about covered it. <laughs> I thought it might. Uh, <laughs> great. Um, uh, um, Kai, uh, what have you been up to in your gap? Uh, Kai, well, Kai had returned uh, back to their home underwater city uh, and been spending a lot of time just with their parents around town. Uh, most importantly, a lot of time uh, finishing college at their church. And can you tell us a little bit about that church? Uh, yeah, yes. Seems you seem to have gained a level in cleric. Um. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, quite a nice uh, 
steeple, very white and ornate in design. Um, and a lot of the uh, teachings are to the god uh, Kesilia. Is that right? Yes. So that's the main god of worship there. And uh, the teachings mainly relate to uh, the balance of the world and how life flows through it. Very much so. Um, and as such, you have gained a level in the Order Domain, is that correct? Yes. Um, that's good. Um, yeah, fantastic. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say you're going to have the longest journey when the letter arrives. Um, but perhaps we'll yeah. say that you are sort of, I don't know, ready to travel um, when the news arrived. Luca, what have you been up to? Anything nice? Uh, so, Luca... Uh took up the king's offer and got a house uh, just on the edge of the city, uh, near the forest. Uh, he also took up the princess's offer. He's just taken up offers. Uh, he took up the princess's offer to learn some fencing um, so that next time he's against a couple of uh, no bald monks, um, he can defend himself a bit better. Uh, and yeah, he's been spending some time um, practicing the little bit of range of magic that he has, um, as well as with, like, Vero's dragon magic. Um, and uh, he's been seeing a lot of his dad recently. His dad's, like, getting old now and is, you know, okay, I mean, is it rude to say a little rundown? <laughs> he's a little rundown. <laughs> You know, yeah, he's, okay. he's, yeah. So he still, he takes his dad on, like, hunting trips and stuff, but his dad's not, his dad's just there for the company, you know. Um, but yeah, but apart from that, nothing much. He'd be chilling. Um, what about Galfax? Bodyguard duty as per usual? Mostly, mostly. Uh, expanding the network of connections, doing um, some more notorious contracts now for more uh, reputable people. And um, started training a bunch of people. Cool. Can I also assume Where that possible. you had your uh, firebrand commissioned into a full flail, into a flame tongue flail? Oh yes. Right. Oh yes. Most um, definitely making that into a proper fully fledged weapon for me. Be bopping some people over the head with that. Well, that's great. Um, as the group oh of you, yeah, that's uh, going to be a nice weapon to be using. As some, uh, as some of you have spread out a little bit. Um, it's fair to say, I think uh, Winona, you were returning to the city. The, sorry, yeah, the, I was on my way back already. Private, uh, private investigation uh, office. Um, as Winona returns, perhaps uh, Karina as well, being in port, um, and Luca, the three of you might have met up with Galthak at some point. Uh, you know, heroes of the realm, uh, even if all you've done is meet up in a bar. Um, but it is first um, Kai who receives the news. Uh, it is fair to say, I think, that uh, some form of magical communication it's been set up between the two, excuse me, uh, between the two uh, sovereigns, um, that of your own city and that of uh, Belaris. Um, so as the two kings sort of communicate together, uh, word is sent that your presence is required immediately um, at Belaris um, and that the, the need is dire. Uh, I'm assuming that that's sort of, well... I'm going to tell you that, uh, that, that that you say yes and come along, because otherwise you're going to be leaving the campaign. Uh, so, uh, as, nah. you nod, as you nod, smile, and immediately get moving. Uh, Kai's uh, just doing a side story. Yeah, exactly. Kai's like, nah, man, I'm doing church. Uh, uh, yes, uh, magical transport will be facilitated, and indeed, tis at the castle where we pick up... Um, Maybe that one? I may or may not have this right. Yeah, 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 cool. Um, let me just load. Um, okay. Um, so, as you all uh, meet up, probably not in the castle, you probably have all managed to meet each other in the, uh, the Seahorse and Sickle, uh, the local tavern where you first went when given news by the king, um, and returned many times, I'm sure. Um, but... 
you all come together to uh, go and visit the king um, and find out exactly what this uh, this trouble might be. Hand over to you for now. Uh, you all outside the castle gates. The guards will open the door for you and allow you passage through. Wow. How's everyone been? Galpec, you are bigger than I remember. Why? <laughs> I've, mm. I haven't been working out too hard. Um, Galpec has like I, a... Am I bulky? My build still fits. No, when owners got smaller. <laughs> I, yeah, I shrank underground. Uh, oh. No, but it's fair to say that it's been a while since anybody's seen your stature. Um, you can never quite as large in the mind as it is in real life. Exactly. I see. It's just like old times. Heroes of the realm. Just That's like about what I was about to say, but I was about to say it in a uh, more, this is eerily familiar and uh, something must be wrong kind of way. That's... Mm -hmm. Heroes of the realm feels a little much, does it not? Uh, no, the king, himself do, yes. is, the king himself has named you Heroes of the Realm. Um, it is titled that it has been ascribed to you, uh, whether you want it or not, Gal. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know how many free drinks I've had? You will be a hero. <laughs> You were a hero! Uh, and free drinks. the only yes. reason I had so many people looking to be trained. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> uh, well, shall we? Oh, no time like the present. Yeah, I suppose let's head in. It's approximately three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, the weather is decent, but you're coming on to um, late summer. Uh, early autumn um, and as the autumn's coming in there's beginning to be a little bit of a chill in the air and, uh, this is like last time what's a better title than Heroes of the Realm if we do something bigger <laughs> yeah he's gonna have to upgrade it protectors of the planet Ooh. guardians of the wait <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> copyright infringement uh oh uh oh <laughs> <laughs> Guardians of the Multiverse. Sure. There's your, there's your way around it. <laughs> yes. Um, as you enter, uh, you see the once familiar counselor um, step up to you and greet you all. Um, welcome. Uh, thank you for coming so quickly, so swiftly. Um, I have lost his page. There we go. Uh, it was his first counselor, Erlan. If you remember him, he was a relatively young man, well cut. Um, and he greets you and says that the king is waiting for you in his private council chambers um, and oh. urges you to go swiftly. Um, they are, if you remember, up there somewhere. Um, yeah, I I'm gonna we just have, have a to, run of the place. I'm going to have to do Galtha because he can't get through the doorways. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to poop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to poop through the doorway and <laughs> shimmy through. It's just, it doesn't work. There's just so much muscle there and it's... It's it's it looks like an absolute cartoon trying to squeeze okay. through. Okay, <laughs> uh, but uh, as you come in, the door is closed behind you uh, by a gesture from uh, the shadowy gentleman, um, who you will remember to be Discretion. Um, Discretion is the king's half brother um, and king's uh, the king's assassin, um, as such, uh, and um, it is him that sort of greets you at first. Oh. He looks like the kind of video game character that would betray you for the good of the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got evil mm -hmm. vizier written all over him. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I don't looks like he could be someone who didn't end up working for the uh, Dark Brotherhood, you know? Um, but regardless, he um, sort of welcomes you in and uh, tells you that um, the need is most urgent. And with no further ado, he places a simple note upon the table. The king grimaces as uh, the note is presented to you. Um, he will inform you that this note was not given by the raiders themselves. Um, the raiders, in fact, sent a man onto the um, onto the beach. Uh, he had his arms cleft from his from the elbow downwards and uh, sort of 
cauterized in a strange way that left black smudges into his skin where he was wearing only a loincloth or repetitive grooves cut with crystals of salt placed inside the cuts with no arms he could not remove said cuts um oh. he had uh he had whipping scars all the way down his back and the man came to the uh came to the shore uh with a strange message which has since been written and passed on to the king and indeed um since then the gentleman who received on the beach uh this tortured man uh, one of the members of the town carve k-a-r-v-e um has come to the city of valaris and met with the king and given over the message they are certain that this note is correct in at least what notes they've taken down um and indeed it says Pay 10,000 gold pieces, or the hostages will be returned to you. If you do not pay, we will return the hostages. If you wish to pay, light a beacon fire at Carve and leave a sea chest containing 10,000 gold pieces on the beach. You have two weeks to make a decision. King informs you that Carve is a four-day journey away, and there are now only seven days until the decision must be made. Oh, looks at you and says what do you make of this returned very yeah um most like rereading the note that's unusual 10,000 gold pieces or your hostages will be returned to you indeed on the surface I would think that we don't have much of a problem but the gentleman returned to the beach tortured was most terrified. Was he dead? I mean, did he die? No, he has been recovering of his wounds at the time. Oh. And though he will forever live a more difficult life. Unfortunately. There's one man looking to save a city. Or at least a town. Wait, Do we know many? where the hostages are from? Uh, the hostages are all from Karv. Uh, they were taken okay. in the dead of night. Um, some were even taken from the beds of their wives without their wives waking. Or from the beds of their husbands, vice versa, without their husbands waking. In total, 22 hostages were taken uh, from a town that has roughly 140 uh, people in its population. Um, they are different in ages, in descriptions, in genders, in jobs in riches and poor uh, and wealth um, there seems to be no pattern between uh, between all of the different people they were all taken in the dead of the night and the following morning the gentleman who was previously a blacksmith um, was returned to the shore in that state the other 21 hostages have not been seen So do we not? So we um, we don't know where they've taken them to. Well, do we? Out, are, the, out to see. are the is this raider group like a known raider group? Have we had troubles with them in the past? Uh, so the raiders come from what is known as the Raider Isles. Um, nobody has really managed to make friendly contact with the Raider Isles. Um, throughout the summer every year, uh, the raiders come and raid uh, along the uh, along the shores. Um, in the past, they have. Um, stopped and, you know, taken stores. And in fact, we've learned to live with it. Uh, by the way, everything that's being said is from discretion. The king says almost nothing. Um, we've learned to live with it, you know. You put aside an extra store of grain. You raise an extra sheep against the raiders coming. And you take it as a tax that you accept as necessity. Um, and no more. Um, but never have we had such raids as these. Well, this is an escalation. It's something new. They've taken and hostages before, but never, never held them ransom or such. The the raiders from the raider isles. Um, is it just one big raider group, or is there lots of different groups of raiders? You see to the heart of the matter fairly quickly. In fact, we know very little. Um, uh, one knows, for example, that uh, they 
are um, beholden of different tribes. Um, you know, one is the tribe of the bear, another is the tribe of the narwhal. Um, and we've seen their different um, motifs, if you will, uh, when raiding um, in the past. But and there's no indication as to which tribe this letter came we from. We haven't seen a single raider from this raid. They came in the dead of the night. They left in the dead of the night. Have they ever done anything like this before? No. Um, then are you sure it's them? Well, they were quite specific in terms of where... Um, so, uh, we only know it as the Raider Isles, but they, they call them the God Runes, their islands. Um, and the language writ that this... Uh, according to the man, the smith, who was set at shore, the language spoken was that of the God Runes. Um, so they at least come from that direction. But you ask the right questions, indeed. Is it these things? Uh, we don't know. Though, where else a raid would come from? I'm not sure. Uh, do... <laughs> I'm not saying this out loud. I'll just say it to the party. <laughs> like, I'll just say it to you, you say guys. say it to the party, you're saying it out loud. Oh, yeah. No, I don't want to say it out loud. I just want to... Like say it. How to... are you saying it to the party without saying it out loud? No, I want to say it to the party. I don't want to say it to the characters. You want to say it to the players, right? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Carry on. As you were. Okay. <laughs> so this may be far fetched. However, what if this town is like struggle bust when it comes to like money and stuff? So they decided to fake this raider thing. I mean, Ooh. we're give it, we're putting the chest on a beach. In, near the town, why wouldn't we town. put it? Yeah, why wouldn't we put it near the Raider Isles? Interesting, interesting. The note uh, makes no sense because there is no incentive to pay. Indeed, and much of that is what we had got to: is that there is no, there is no incentive to pay the money. They like. I don't know, gave all the hostages a disease or something that will spread through the town or through the land. An it's... excellent thought is to quarantine them on arrival. And we have sent some soldiers down there. Perhaps you may pass on the command to um, to have them quarantined. If you are willing to go to Carve and speak with those there and witness the return of these hostages in whatever state they may be returned in, I'd be most grateful. Is that what you plan to do? Do you not plan to pay this ransom at all? Unless anyone can give me a good reason to pay for the murder of my citizens, I see no reason to do so, says the king. Um, the assassin um, turns and uh, says to you, I, I will make my own way there um, and be present. So if, let's say, that we're known as right, and let's say that they're going to have a disease on them, a curse, anything dangerous, you want to risk them getting it and then coming back and spreading it. If they're properly quarantined, or we'll send a, a, one of the priests to the temple. They should be able to at least ascertain any sort of disease or curse that is on them. I have an out of character question. How does a fantasy land quarantine something? <laughs> uh, yeah, so this mostly involves sort of putting them in a separate building and sort of telling them to stay there. See what happens. And forcibly making them stay there if necessary with a sword. Wouldn't forcibly making them stay there affect the people who are forcibly putting them there? <laughs> Mm. Not necessarily. You know, a guard at sword's length isn't necessarily going to catch a disease unless it's incredibly very Unless it's airborne? <laughs> Even airborne, that's, you know, that's incredibly unlikely. Is this the start of an apocalypse <laughs> zombie outbreak? That's. I feel like they're going to be zombies or something crazy like that. If such, then I would like you to witness it from the beach. Um, I've made arrangements for your travel there. If you would. I can see of no can conceive of no better people to to send. Unless should I send one of my children with you? 
Ooh, maybe we should take someone who has uh, the spell detect disease and poison, and then that way they'll be. Oh, I was more talking about our priest, but okay. Well, yes, yeah, that too. Um... Is he offering? Wait, the king is offering to send one of his children. He's asking if you think he should. Uh, the assassin has cancelled him otherwise, but. Do we know any of them besides Princess Grace? Uh, you know Regal. Uh, Regal was the youngest prince. Um, he was a bit of a spoiled brat about being involved in the meeting no. um, last time. No. Uh, you know that uh, Prince Chivalry, uh, his eldest son, um, has been up towards the mountains, um, sort of uh, attempting to uh, broker trade agreements and peace. Um, Prince Verity is also at the um, at the castle. He is the second son. Um, and he is trained somewhat in a little bit of magic as well as a little bit of priestly ways. Um, as a second son would be, he's mostly a soldier, but with little bits of extra knowledge. And Karina has probably tr had some training alongside him. Probably. I, he probably doesn't want to send the princess, right? I... I... I don't uh, think discretion I would... looks to the king, and I don't want to risk any of your children's. I would have to agree. You would agree. If they had decided to come and make treaty, then I would send... Well, I would send chivalry if he was here, and verity if not. Um, but as it is, I'm more inclined to send Astrid. Uh, you've met Astrid. She's, the, she's basically the general of the army and the captain of the guard. Uh-oh. Thing. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not riskier, your children. I don't want to make any mistakes in this transaction. It, on first glance, it does seem that we should just do nothing and everything will be okay. But, well, that is unlikely. As you say, well, we suspect some sort of foul play via magic but we cannot on only suspicion pay for the death of our citizens of course not uh, go ahead Karina DM question sea chest does that just mean like your stereotypical pirate chest uh, it me just means a chest that would be capable of going out to like if it went in the sea it would remain waterproof that's okay. literally it yeah it's like a a wooden right. chest oiled with uh, oiled uh, a wooden chest lined with uh oiled um what do you call it water skin sort of uh yeah oiled skin of a sort of seal or something um yeah there is a proper name for it but brain is gone well i'm i'm in i have oh, to... it's literally called oil skin <laughs> there we go. I knew I was confused. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and the king sort of implies he has the money. Um, but I mean, you know, he has the money. It's the same fee he gave you. Um, but it's a large amount. Understandable. Uh, would we be able to talk to this messenger, this hostage they returned before we head out? Well, indeed, that it. Well, uh, hmm. The hostage they returned is at a temple near Carve. Um, the, the man who was... Oh, okay. Cut, um, mm. I've made arrangements for you to visit on the way. Um, but uh, the messenger who came here, we have since returned to the town. You will find him when you're there. Um, he was known as Speaker Jalen. Um, like that. Um, Speaker Jalen. Uh, he was... He's... Uh, Second only to the mayor in the town. Power. The mayor was not taken as a hostage, but just a point of interest. It will be a hard journey to get there swiftly. I hope you don't mind, but if you could say out as soon as possible. After, obviously, after any questions are answered, and I'm sure that you may need provisions for the journey, but... Uh, Vera, like, whispers in my ear, and I turn to the king. 
Uh, he wants to know what time lunch is. Uh, Today? Traditionally lunch is, well, approximately three and a half hours ago. Did you miss it? <laughs> yes. Well, I can make sure that you have some hot food on the way out. In fact, and he makes it and sort of click at the door and, uh, and immediately uh, a serving maid. Um, ah, why am I not in the thing with the what's it? Um, immediately. Where is she? She's hiding all the way down here. Come on, serving. Nope. Oh, I've lost her. I've lost her. She vanished. I had a serving <laughs> maid and then she disappeared. Well, anyway, a serving maid will appear. Um, I was so annoyed. I was so ready for that. Oh, I think she's upstairs in the kitchen <laughs> this time of day. Um, oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, a serving maid will appear um, and ask what the king wants. And uh, he asks for a brief warm repast uh, for you all. Um, well, uh, travel provisions to be made for the next five days. Um, you will need to ride pretty much night and day um, to get there. All right. Unfortunately, the court mage is already there. Otherwise, he would be able to assist you in getting there. Hey. Do you have any other questions? Oh, I had, I have a question. Uh, what do we do if it is a disease that's being stricken or a curse or? What must be done will be done, though. I don't expect you to do that. If it can be cured, <laughs> it will be. And if it cannot, then we will ensure that it does not infect the rest of the populace. So, just to clarify, you want us to kill them? No, like that's no. Not, that duty will not fall to you. But yes. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. So he's saying that yes, they will kill them if there's no way to cure it or remove the or remove the curse, but they won't ask but, you to do the killing. Oh I get it. Yeah. It will be as merciful as it can be. There are uh, I'm sorry. So there is a possibility that something terrible has already happened to them. You uh, understand that could be so, right? Of course. For all I know, that they may be returned piece by piece, and Payne would have done absolutely nothing. This note seems too ominously written to not have a very specific guide. You cut out. Oh, um, I said this note seems too too ominously written to not have a very specific meaning. Indeed, but what that meaning is. I yeah, we'll to have to out. we'll have to see for ourselves. I'm putting a hundred gold on werewolves. <laughs> and the king looks at you with slight anger in his eyes. Well, if we're down to gambling on the outcome of my citizens' lives, I think I shall take my rest. And he will leave. He's done with you. Stop being rude. What a party pooper. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, he's also Just scared of losing the bet! He didn't take the bet. head quietly in a corner, just... Um, discretion looks at you all, and... You understand this must be kept very quiet. Are we Boss. expected to bring the 10,000 gold? I don't think the 10,000 gold will be paid, but if you need it to be paid, I will have it. I will meet you in the city. I think it best we don't travel together. I don't think we need to pay it, but I'd rather have it on hand. Indeed. We shall have it taken. The situation, the situation is complex and difficult as this. Can't make any guarantees. Indeed. Um, the plans I have made, well, it is worth telling you, is that we will uh, be sending an, an official, uh, Verity will be attending an official visit at Shale, uh, which is further down. Um, let's, let's put you all on the map so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, Uh, So Verity will be visiting Shale, 
uh, with Elena Brightlands and uh, sorry Astrid Brightlands um, and a full retinue of guards and some nobles traveling as well. And indeed, Verity will be doing just that and going on to High Downs. Um, it is important at this time of year that we make contact with the various uh, cities and towns and villages on the uh, um. coast. And, Ensure that they have all been treated well. And of course, Verity will be expected to stop in at Carl. But he will stop nearby and rest and not enter the town proper for fear of what may go on. I, however, and Astrid will join. But I wish for you to get there as fast as possible. Looks pretty close, actually. Four days. Hmm. Oh, we'll get there way early. All right. All right. You've got seven. You need to get. Uh, and, uh, oh, we got this note a week ago. Uh, no, the the note arrived four days arrived at the castle four days after it happened at Carve, right? Or five days roughly, because it doesn't travel as fast as you can because they haven't got as good horses. Um, it then took a couple of days to gather you all, um, and then it is now sort of seven days in. You've now got another. God, seven that's days. rough. So really, they mean you got two weeks as I finish writing this letter. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, we also don't know how long the gentleman was on the beach wandering about before someone finally noticed him, and etc, etc, right? So time is is tight. I don't want you there. Okay. So, when you leave the city, um, proper mounts have been garnered for you all. Um, normally it would be quicker to travel by boat, but we do have fear of any water-based travel. Obviously, with the raiders coming over the sea. Um, as uh, as we uh, leave the city together, uh, Vera like whispers something in my ear, and we start like snickering. Like we're a little way from leaving the city, but go on. You just said as you leave the city. No, he's he's telling you the plan. Oh. Right. Um, as you leave the city, there there will be mounts provided. You will ride them uh, at a full gallop until uh, the break of dawn, uh, where you will. Um, make meet at um, a small tavern at the uh, inlet. You'll be led by a man. Um, his name is Riddle. Um, he's one of mine. Um, there you will change mounts and continue riding on throughout the day. Um, you will need ferry over the small river on the way there. and That will be provided for. Once across the ferry, again, your mounts will be changed. Um, we've made allowances for you to stop tomorrow night overnight for about eight hours and after which we should be able to travel day and night to get to Carl. Um, uh, correct mount stops will be on the way, and Riddle is provided with some... Uh, well, an assassin cannot always keep his secrets. Uh, we'll be provided with some potent herbs that will keep you going throughout the day and night. But I must warn you, the effect of these herbs can be a little drastic. Um, take them only if you feel necessary. Uh, for when they run out, you will feel exhausted and hopeless. Good to know. Delightful. <laughs> I hope that you will not need them, but there is also a small matter of the king's gratitude for your actions in this. Um, we will ensure that you are paid well and provisioned well, but also the king would like to offer you a somewhat official position. Obviously, your title of Heroes of the Realm has been greatly known throughout the, the cities, but um, he would like to appoint you as uh, members of the Vixen Guard, which is the equivalent of sort of um, yeah, three ranks down from captain. Um, oh. oh, I was really hoping to be Ambassador Kenner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we'll have to wait for that. But regardless, uh, he says paid well, but he doesn't actually tell you how much. Um, you can assume it's okay, well. we know he's good for it. You can assume that can be as discussed well. if we're successful. <laughs> well, no, um, there is no success or failure. He's called you from your home to ride to car, unless you don't make it there. Um, that is the job. Um, what you, you do, fail. Is... fail. <laughs> <laughs> you might not with this zombie outbreak. Well, you have to survive getting back, I guess. Um, but anyway, yeah. he wishes you luck and asks you if there's anything you need for the journey. Um, and he will also turn to Galthak and assure Galthak that the mount selected will be able to bear him. 
Oh, um, good, because I was about to inquire. <laughs> Can we just get someone to pay, uh, feed my camel while we're... Of course. <laughs> uh, all pets and homes will be well looked after. Great. Did anybody uh, else pick up a pet? Else? While we guys were away. I mean, dogs, cats, lizards. Fish. Yeah, they thought about it. <laughs> a fish! Um, I asked if pets, not, not breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that all Tritons eat? It can fish? be both. True, true. Keep it. But the best thing about living underwater is that food keeps fresh. Uh, in death. Oh, <laughs> man. <I'm> just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> the fridge is literally a box uh, <laughs> within which the animals still swim. Uh, but yes, did anybody pick up a pet? Or are we quite content with those animals we already have? No, I've invested in like a full camel enclosure in my backyard oh the camels are maintained but okay so no menagerie of other beasts great well in that case um yeah uh he will gesture and you may set out um it's now approximately 5 30 p.m you begin to see clouds moving over the sky towards you um as it's still summer the sun will be up until half eight nine p.m um but yeah the uh the journey begins out in the hills and as you get to the edge of the city, oh, a repast of food, obviously, on the way out. Um, you get to the gates. Good. Uh, I'll hand over to Luca. You said something about ears whispering, snickering. Oh, uh, that moment's gone. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's a trap. I'm gonna wonder for the rest of my life. <laughs> what were they snickering about? <laughs> then I'll take a moment. And I'll ignore the horse, and I'll summon my phantom steed. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Does your phantom steed take on any particularly unusual? No, well, it looks like a horse until you look at the mane and tail, and it's actually running water going down. Whoa, that cool. is cool. I'm just amazed you didn't say the words fire. Um, <laughs> 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 when you're like, the mane and tail are actually running water. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it's just not a pony talk. The main and tail are running water. The rest of it's just fire. Just all fire. Great, it's all <laughs> fire, except for the running main and tail. Uh, no, fantastic. As you mount up and arrive, uh, you will indeed see one beast that looks. Uh, frankly, it looks a little evil, to be honest. Um, it's sort of 18 hands high. Um, it's, its shoulders are sort of like a, you know, a brick shit house. Um, and that it's, one's mine. Uh, it, it appears to be attempting to bite anyone and everyone. Um, uh -oh. but yes, uh, it most definitely is yours, Galfe. Um, and you'll be able to set out as the evening comes. Uh, the area around Valaris is fairly pleasant. Um, you set out, uh, riding across gentle rolling hills, um, lightly grassed. Uh, you'll be going along the main trail for now. Um, horse thing it... not getting too bitey then. Uh, no, it's it's once you sat on it, it decided decided that it had had enough of its day, <laughs> uh, and decided to just get on with its task. It's lost all energy. <laughs> energy, 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 energy. Uh, seeing um, Gal back with his horse, uh, I'm gonna turn to him and be like, Psst. "What do you want, small thing?" <laughs> 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 Uh, do, do you have the same problem with women? What? <laughs> what? Which problem? What? That he rides them and they no longer want to move? I was thinking that they like to bite. What do you mean? Oh, that he's too big. <laughs> oh! That is a question I am not answering. That's very personal, Luca. <laughs> that is. I'll I'll just turn back to Vera. Told you so. <laughs> Great. As uh, as you begin to discuss Galthak's bed habits, um, you can see the man appointed to you is a little wary. Um, he seems incredibly competent and good at what he's here for. He leads the horses um, very easily. Uh, he rides a chestnut mount himself. And uh, he's lightly armoured in a sort of uh, a leather breastplate uh, with, a, sorry, a leather jerkin with a metal breastplate over the top. Um, he has a sword at his hip and a bow on his back, as well as a small dagger. 
Um, his hair is closely cropped, and if anything, the best word to describe him is nondescript. Um, very plain hair, plain face. Um, you know, uh, the typical eyes of uh, dark set eyes and dark features of Beric. Um, yeah, he wouldn't stand out in a crowd. Uh, useful for a, a man who, whose employer is an assassin, of course. Um, he introduces himself briefly to you as Riddle, um, and shakes each of your hands, and then, uh, I understand where to make great haste. It won't be easy going after the first few hours, so I suggest that we settle into our saddles over the next few hours, and once night comes, and by the looks of it, the rain, we'll be riding blind almost. Whilst the rain doesn't bother us much, it'll bother the mounts. Yeah. Let's get to it. Uh, you are already riding at this point, like as you. Oh, we're already himself. getting to it. Yeah. Um, cool. It's just, uh, as I said, takes you over the sort of rolling green hills. It's gentle ground, and uh, is anybody versed in horse riding? Um, not as a player, but as a character. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> not you. Seahorses. Um, is it fair to say, Luca, <laughs> uh... <laughs> Luca and Karina, you've probably ridden a little bit. Yeah, I think it, not a lot, but enough to know how to and be relatively competent at it. I don't know. I don't really think so. I mean, other than probably traveling down south, which actually might have been a fair amount of experience. Well, I also wondered whether perhaps, you know, um, pleasure rides are a thing. Um, whether just sort of within the city over the last 18 months, um, train... Wow. Wow. Um, training would have been offered in riding if anybody wished. Um, I would say, with the exception of Winona, uh, Winona, you probably don't have to do much in terms of riding. Um, yeah, right enough that you just sort of sit there and hold on, and it all happens. Um, if you Good. wanted to redirect the horse, I don't think it would listen. Um, Aww. So mm. <laughs> uh, just how tall are you, actually, Winona? Um, three and a half I foot believe foot? I'm three foot three. Mm. 99 centimeters. Yeah, so unless you've got a strength score of 12 or above, I don't think that you'd be able to maneuver the horse. Eight. Eight, yes. <laughs> no, the horse won't listen to you if you move it. Um, Kai, it's fair to say this is a little bit unusual, but it's not as unpleasant as the camels were. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, anybody who is uh, certainly Galthak, you would have seen uh, beasts driven, if even if not riding them that often. Um, you will make note that... Uh, the horses aren't being galloped at full pelt. Um, they're being round a steady canter that, whilst tiring for the horses, they can probably maintain for a long period of time. If these were the same mounts you were going to be riding tomorrow morning, it would soon be the end of the horses. But if they're only being ridden <coughs> across tonight, um, you'll notice that Riddle isn't necessarily being reckless, um, but he's using everything he's got to ensure that you get there as quickly as possible. He's playing to win, effectively. Um, and indeed, as you stop briefly after a couple of hours, um, the, uh, the trail is sort of still quite flat at this point, and he says that for a moment you'll need to walk the horses. Um, and he goes round to each of the horses, and he gives them each what appears to be an apple. Um, though, uh, Luca, uh, give me a survival check or a nature check, whichever you prefer. Is anybody proficient with cooking tools, by the way? Uh, that's a 26 survival. Okay, never mind. I don't need the cooking utensils. Um, yeah, uh, you notice that these uh, apples are spiced with something called carrot seed. Um, you will have known about carrot seed. Uh, it's incredibly... Uh, it, it, it's incredibly bad practice uh, to give carrot seed to a horse that you're going to sell. Um, for a day or two, the horse will show incredibly well. It will look uh, shinier than ever and um, lively to the touch and, you know, uh, incredibly healthy. And then after that, it will drop with exhaustion um, and may never quite be the same horse again. Uh, each of these horses is being fed this carrot seed so it can run to its full potential for this run. Um, it won't kill the horse. Um, it won't even harm the horse particularly much in the long term but in the short term it's gonna run its purpose and then it's gonna be rested for a while um 
Luca, this is the same, a similar thing to the herbs that you that were mentioned in the past that would be fed to you guys if you need to have a lot of energy for a short period of time and then be exhausted at the end, as the assassin mentioned. Uh, once he's given the horses all these apples um, and walked them for about ten minutes, uh, he remounts and suggests that you will do the same. The ride's going to get tough from here on out, he says. Right. Let's get on with it, then. Do you all see well in cast... the dark? Oh, sorry, go on, Karina. I will cast light on um, one of the horses. Um, are they wearing, like, saddles that have, like, straps in the front? Yeah. That go around... Yeah. yeah, I'll cast it on the, that. Okay. Um, the horse sort of and then I'll... looks down a little bit and it's surprised, which carries <laughs> on. And then I'll do dancing lights in front of us as we go to give us a sort of up-ahead view. Nice. Beautiful. Nice. Um, yeah, it's it's not quite dark oh. yet, but I'd assume that that's what's going to happen when it gets dark. Um, he mm-hmm. does ask if any of you uh, struggle to see particularly clearly in the dark. That would be me. Is it just Galtac without dark vision? think so uh great um he'll offer you a dark black paste um and you will see that he's pasted above his own eyes being human um if you do so it will grant you 12 hours of dark vision oh good so i don't need to jam this stuff in my eye <laughs> so no, what i no. thought was gonna happen <laughs> oh no um but it is quite effective uh your eyes may be a little sore in the morning but trust me it's not going to be your eyes you're worried about and he slaps his buttocks um in gesture as he says it um, if you're riding for four days straight, it's not your eyes. Um, and, uh, yeah. At this mm. point, um, horses all ready. Uh, it slowly, uh, the clouds have moved inwards. And, unfortunately, uh, it begins to rain. Um, for a short period of time, the rain is quite light. Um, but after a little while, um, it begins to get pretty heavy. Sorry. So, I think I can tough it out. How's the horses doing? Yeah. yeah. The biggest worry is that you're also coming to the end of the um, a- end of the main trail, and you're going to be going cross country. Um, so at this time, as you enter sort of onto rougher trails, paths broken by game and uh by passes by as opposed to um traditional roads uh the the water is making the footing slick um underneath and indeed if you look out to your right as you travel uh you will be able to see down far over the hills and down the cliff you will be able to see the sea um which is where the storm has come in from Does the storm seem natural? Uh, yes, uh, you you believe it to be natural. Um, it's uh, sorry, um, it's a fairly common school. It's not. I wouldn't even uh, traditionally call it a. I mean, it's a storm in the sense of uh, it's a rainstorm. It's not. You know, there's no thunder, lightning, great giant beasts throwing lightning bolts across the sky. Sort of weather. It's just. It's it's unpleasant at the moment. Or pleasant, if you're a triton. Um, <laughs> really? You're going to pay me 12 seconds of rain? That's not what I asked for. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, as uh, as at this point the sun begins to set, um, the hardest riding is actually as the sun is setting. Um, as you're currently sort of traveling slightly uh, west on the path as the sun is setting, um, moving inland a little bit, um, riding into the setting sun, uh, which is coming straight sort of over the horizon into your eyes, um, making everything seem a little difficult to see. The rain is kicking up a little bit of a fog as well. Um, and yeah, it's visibility is not great, but worst of all, it's not great for the horses. Um, and indeed, a couple of times the animals do not quite stumble, but slip a little with their hooves on the ground. Um, Oof. How yeah. close are we to that cliffside? Um, at the moment, you're heading inland for this very reason. Um, great, great. So you're probably, yeah, quite a, quite a way um, uh, from the cliffside. Um, and as the... I'm... Yeah, go on. This is a really silly use for this. I'm going to pull out the wand, and I'm going to sky right 
a circle in front of the sun. <laughs> um, yeah, so this sort of this floating um, circle is just going to give you enough of a shadow. Um, I'm, I'm assuming it's not actually that far away from you, right? You're not trying to block out the sun in the sky. You're trying to block it away from you guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> does it move with you? It can appear anywhere I can see. So It appears there, but does it stay moving with you or is it going to be static? Uh, it would be static. Oh, I mean, static. It's within sight, so I can put it a few 50 miles out in the sky. And... Yeah, but it, well, I suppose it might be big enough. Okay, I'll say that it's, it's effective for the first half an hour, and then half an hour later, um, you begin to ride sort of underneath it, and it's, it, again, as the sun sets as well, right? Um, but I'm supposing you could use the one more than once. Um, so indeed, uh, another sort of half an hour later, the sun actually is really dipping down below the horizon and uh the storm really begins to kick up a little bit um there's no thunder but uh the rain is driving at this point it's it's really coming in towards you and the wind is blowing it right into your faces um which is never nice and yeah um and you begin to uh, make your way into the night there are some trees dotted around but the forest isn't quite thick yet you will be traveling through something a little thicker um a little further down but for now um you're just riding straight into the driving rain uh, riddle turns to you all and we'll walk the horses again for a short period how are we doing <laughs> how are we doing um anybody a particularly early riser you like the early morning yeah yeah cool karina go ahead and give me a con check oh no just a check just to see how you're doing don't worry Oh, I'm doing great. 19. 19, yeah. Um, so it's getting a little late. It's sort of 10 o'clock in the evening. Um, it's a little strenuous activity for this time of day, but nothing too major. You're all doing all right, um, as far as you know. The horses are a little lathered, a little, um, you know, they appear to have sweated a little bit. Um, the running's definitely been hot. What's with the 12 seconds of rain? Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, but in general, um, they're gonna, they're gonna manage to keep going for at least another few hours. Um, he hands you all, uh, strips of dried meat, uh, if you are willing to partake. If not, your own rations, uh, if you've got some. Um, but he'll hand you all strips of warm, uh, of meat, likely spiced to warm, uh, to warm you up, but not in any way, um, sort of, it, they're not gonna intoxicate you, uh, like the other herds. Um, and he offers you a uh, hip flask, which he tells you contains Sunsage brandy um, to warm you in the night. Ah. Don't mind if I do. Well, I certainly don't need that brandy. I think I'll be good. <laughs> You're happy in the cold? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Happy in the cold, all right. How Food does, sounds how, good. How does Luca feel about wet fur? The same way humans would think about wet hair. Ah, it's a lot harder to get dry. You can't just you know, wipe your a, face off. He's a person, you know. Cool. He is more <laughs> than an anthropomorph. He's an anthropomorph, too. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I'll be more than a small thing, right? Uh, ah! Yeah, but it, 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 is he quite comfortable in the cold, wet rain, or...? Yeah, he's a hunter. He's uh, fine in any weather. Uh, some, you know, dogs are great in the rain, but um, some people, you know, don't, with long hair hate the rain. I don't know. I'm just asking how you are. Don't take a pass. I'm fine, thanks. Great. Gosh, don't ask the giant how he is with his head in the clouds. Uh, how's Kai? Is he, are things going swimmingly? Yeah, quite swimmingly. <laughs> swimmingly, oh. Yeah, good. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you know, well, actually, I don't know. This is a glasses wear experience, but Winona's having to decide between wearing her glasses or um, having the annoying thing where the raindrops are all over the lenses. <laughs> She's an oh, artificer. She could make little windshield wipers for her glasses. <laughs> Not until level two. <laughs> I gotta level up. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, you know, I think you can make basic things, right? Yeah. Like yeah, you can make tiny little objects, right? Yeah, I don't know that it does anything like that, but that... Oh, 
you know, if you get really creative with this interpretation, a static visual effect, I don't know. Yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm real the, uh, for the future, so I can read it. Magical tinkering is what it's called. Yeah, I'm just looking for it. There we go. Um, five feet of light, six seconds long recorded message, making an odor or nonverbal sound. A static visual effect, including up to 25 words of text. Yeah, I don't think any of those are particularly See? See? No. <laughs> um, no, you're, you're thinking of infusions, which is level 6. Um, so, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I, I am going to, uh, if Renana's going to have some drinks, I'll have some with her. Yeah, I mean, it's more just a, you know, a mouthful or two of brandy will just keep the, the heat inside you. Uh, it is cold. Even though it's summer, you know, you're riding at pace in the rain, in the wind. I love a, nightc a nightcap, so... Okay. Uh, well, you've only got another uh, 28 hours before sleep, so you should be alright. Um, oh. Yeah. And he will in turn to inform you, Riddle, uh, that it's time to mount back up and say to you that it's going to be the hardest riding of the entire journey over the next six hours. Um, okay, let's get started. He turns yeah. and suggests that perhaps you, uh, you find a way of securing yourself in the saddle. Um, oh... In fact, maybe even the rest of you secure yourselves in the saddle, you know, and tie your hands to the reins. It's, but then if the horse goes down, you might be trapped underneath it, so it's a 50-50 with that one. Um, but uh, he will lead you off the trail completely and into open ground. You know, if it gets too dark, we could um, Luke Skywalker our horses. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? Did you mean too You're going to taunt-taunt them? You're going to taunt-taunt the horses. Yeah. Well, I don't it is. I'm sure it's in Star Wars, right? Where it like, can you explain? Uh, like, if they're in a call place, so they like yeah. cut. Open yeah, the that's episode five. In. They cut yeah. open a tauntaun and they crawl inside. Oh. But then we can't ride them. <laughs> yes, they would make quite. We will be warm. We will be yeah. warm. Why don't you just I think there's. I can climb inside him. <laughs> we have <laughs> listened. But we have options Small to get warm. Could do it if I on the wish. Right. Um, anyway, uh, at this point, he leads you off the trail and into fairly broken ground out along the, the grass. At this point, you are riding near blind, even with the light and the dancing lights out in front of you. You are pretty much trusting to the horses to get their footing right. Um, after about half an hour, um, I need a dice. Sorry. Um, Hi. Give me an animal handling check. Okay. Your horse's leg buckles to the side and begins to stumble. 20. Power. 20? Nice. Um, you're able to grab the reins and sort of guide him to keep him going. Um, but you notice after a short while that your horse is beginning to slow a little. Um, it seems like maybe he's hurt his leg. Okay. Uh... I can see there's an external wound. Sorry? And I, I can, can I like glance over and kind of see it? Uh, well, you, from your animal knowledge, you understand that maybe he's strained a muscle. Maybe he's, you know, he's pulled something. He doesn't appear to have broken or twisted anything. Just seems a little uncomfortable. Every time he gets to his right front paw, paw? Wow. Uh, <laughs> right front leg. Um, he gets, uh, he seems to be going a little gingerly on it. It's more your knowledge that allows you to see the world. Okay. Okay. Can I just, like, place my hand on him and ask, uh, use closed wound? Ooh! Expend one of the horse's hit die. What's a horse's hit die? <laughs> um, yeah, I would That's say that um, the jolt of magic into him allows him to ignore the, the pain uh, for a little while. Um, it straightens out the strain a little bit. Uh, it's assists him in sort of keeping going steady. Um, and indeed, he's able to keep pace. Um, and, uh, yeah. You continue onwards uh, through the night. Uh, after about another 45 minutes, um, Winona. Um, I'm not sure if I want an animal no. handling check or an acrobatics <laughs> check. Um, you want acrobatics <laughs> for sure. But basically, the horse <laughs> stumbles forwards. Um, near throwing you from the ride. Do you want to make an acrobatics check for me then, please? 
I will. Mm -hmm. I didn't tie myself to it because I was afraid of getting smashed. Yeah. Well, it wasn't great. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Oh, Lenora, no. You are tossed to the side. You are able to hold on, but you are holding the reins, though neither of your legs is astride the, the horse. Oh, how um, embarrassing. Sort of hanging out to the side. Um, oh. Galfak, give me a perception check. <laughs> Galfak, pick me up. <laughs> oh, sorry, no. Galf what, is, what is the order here? Do we think... I had assumed that it was Galfak in the front and Luke at the back. Well, Luke, uh, sure. Is, is, that, is that right? Or would it be the other way around? Luke at the back and Galfak at the front. Any preference? Luke, Luke, Luca in the okay, Regardless cool. of my position, yeah. um, uh, with a net 20, could I see this happen? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to say you're at the back. Um, you see it happening and you're able to um, sort of ride up next to uh, Winona and assist yeah. uh, getting back. Scoop her up, yeah. Um, with no effort. <laughs> with your yeah, big arms. This doesn't seem oh, yeah. to have been particularly affected. Um, but after it a little while, you do notice that it seems to be frothing at one side of its mouth. The hell? My horse? Your horse, yes. Oh, it's getting exhausted. God. Oh, it's the that that. Well, I don't know about the snack they had, but it's probably oh, well, I, that I wearing off. To say, yeah. Um, no, no. It, it, you don't think it's wearing off, but perhaps you think that the horse is exhausted and isn't aware of it. Oh. Um, okay. Hold out or let anything be happening, or are you just gonna? Uh, I will probably use um. I mean, can I, I can see our party at least, right? Yeah, you're all riding sort of in line. I would say that it's sort of five or six feet in, ahead of you and five or, you know, okay. or maybe perhaps nine or ten feet behind and in front of you cool. between each horse. But you're going to be heard. Yeah, I'm now. just going to uh, use message to Riddle and say that something's going wrong with my horse. Um, he puts out his hand and a little light sort of appears in the... Wow, my hand just vanishes if I do that. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, a little light sort of appears in his hand, uh, and he slows down uh, steadily, um, and then eventually brings you all to a halt, and he comes over to look at your horse. Oh, fuck. Damn. Oh. Winona, are you willing to ride double with someone? Oh, uh, gladly. Is it too late? If we leave him now to walk it off, he may well survive. Otherwise, we'll be... well. He can ride with me. Oh, thank you. He moves over and you see him very tenderly sort of patting the horse's neck. Smithy. Be all right, right. Go on, find your way back home. Vero's, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vero's looking at the horse with hungry eyes. No. He, he looks over. I've I've raised this horse since he was a foal. I'd rather it wasn't dinner. No, I won't overexert this horse. Uh, he sort of bends his head towards the horse, and the horse bends his head down towards him. You can see there's a trusted bond there. He removes the saddle and the saddle bags. Moves this couple of saddle bags to his own horse and leaves the rest on the roadside. And with a short, sharp sort of whack of the flat of his sword on the horse's hip. Um, the horse begins to walk back towards the Maris, That horse is lucky Vera's not bigger. Mm. Yes, right <laughs> now I think the horse might win that fight. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, um, so Winona, sorry, you're riding with Karina, is that correct? Fine by me, yeah, on this incredibly cool... It was Karina that said... That Phantom was Steed. It was. Uh, how long does Phantom Steed last? Uh... Well, it's a ritual, so I can keep casting it, technically. Right, um, so at every 50 minutes, you're just ritual casting it again? Yeah. There's no transition period. Like, I, I think it's fair to say you're renewing the magic. It's not you're not yeah. recasting it. Yeah, because otherwise, like, you imagine, you have to cast it in the exact place your horse is going to be. So, <laughs> like, you just drop down onto the next one. <laughs> but no, uh, I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't want to slow us down. Because, you know, it was fine. cool. Um, it's very in cool. that case I'm going to need a con save from you at this point um, oh no if you have warcaster or anything similar that gives you advantage on concentration checks um, you may roll with advantage if you don't roll straight please. double checking but no I don't have it yet it will be coming yes. 17 <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> so uh, you're used to excessive magic use in a day you've had a lot of practice over the last year or so 
Um, even though it's a ritual, after a while it becomes strenuous, right? And you're also riding a horse, and you've also been up for 19 hours. It's, you know, you it's it's a lot. Um, but you're able to maintain your concentration and keep it going. Uh, unlike the other horses, the Phantom Steed doesn't tire in the slightest. Um, and is quite happy to keep galloping, because it's technically a new one every hour. Um, awesome. Oh. Um, after about another hour, uh, as you remount and ride out... Um, well, it's a 50-50 now. Ah, it's Luca. Um, Luca, go ahead and give me a perception check, please. It's a 21. You look out and you see that you seem to be you sort of not in front and to your right. Um, a man has his head down and seems to be riding and is going to come across your path. Um, Riddle doesn't seem to have noticed. You're just behind him. I'll see what happens. Okay, so you don't say anything? No. Okay. Um, after a little while, uh, perhaps another minute or two, uh, the man rides directly into the path of uh, you all, and indeed Riddle has to swerve quite drastically to go round him, and then slow down afterwards, and then you all sort of steady up, and he turns and What are you doing, man? The man turns, and I might ask the same of you. I am bound to Valaris. I've come from Forge, a small village down by the coast. Is that even on the map? Is that no, how small it is? It's tiny. Well, these these village these are towns. Uh, villages are not on the map. Um, oh, okay. So you've got you've got cities and towns. Uh, you've got no villages. There are loads of villages. Um, was, what are you doing? Was this guy road? riding the same direction as us? No, he's riding towards Valaris. He's okay. come up from the coast, which is your right. He's riding. You would assume for the main path, which is over to your left. He looks bedraggled and um, determined. Um, he has a weapon at his hip, though it looks like it might be a farming implement that's been sharpened. Uh, Riddle, so Riddle looks at him and then looks at you all and he shrugs to you guys as if to, to allow you to take control of the situation. What, uh, what news do you carry? If you please, I'd rather know who you are or where you're riding to, or from. We are the fabled, real-life heroes of the realm. Mm -hmm. And then Luca just, like, looks at him as if we're waiting for either applause or cheers or a gift or... Something that he, like, everyone else has ever given him when he's said this. I can't say we know much about the realm as a whole or heroes as such. Do you ride from Polaris? We do. Yes. There's been a raid at our village. Fourteen men taken raid. in the night. We were given this stupid message. They came uh, upon, They came up to the beach themselves. The two men, harsh raiders from the Godruns, when the raid arrives. I didn't much get it myself. I go to the king. Um, um, we're well, investigating... Yeah, exactly. Um, well, it's weird, you know. I did double check. They said that if we didn't pay a thousand gold pieces, they would return our hostages. My wife is one of the ones taken. You said they took 14 people? Yes. And two did raiders just... gave this message to you? They did. They came in a, a red-keeled ship, painted on the dead of the night. They only woke us after our men and women were missing. Did you say 1,000? Indeed. You could hmm. ascertain that perhaps because it's a smaller village? Oh, they're playing Monopoly. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my fucking job. Um, okay. Uh, what town are you from? Oh, yeah, what's it's the name the of the village your... of Forge. Forge, right. Difficult to open a pen. 
um, just out of curiosity, how big is the population of your town normally? Can't be that much, right? 25, 30. There are about 10 of us left. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Jesus. Can I, does the note that he has, is it the exact same? Other than It's the not amount? a note um, as such. So the raiders told him and he's had one of the town members write it down. Um, mm -hmm. Much the same as um, Carl. But yes, it appears to be a written note. Um, the, 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 sorry, the note appears to contain the same information. Um, if you do not pay, uh, your hostages will be returned to you. Did they give uh, you a... Uh, uh, sorry, if you do... Which way? Wait, yeah, if you, they if, will be returned? Nah, 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 you, the same <laughs> message as before, my brain has gone backwards. If you do not pay, they will return the hostages. If they do pay, they will be killed. Oh. oh is that right? Yes, yeah. Well, it doesn't say if they will be killed, but you were going to assume as much. That's the implication. Or they won't come back in some way or another. Did they give them a time frame also, like two weeks? Two weeks? I wish it was so. No, they told us they wanted our answer immediately. I asked oh. for 24 hours. I do. We should... <sighs> we should go there, right? Sturdy arms like Can yours I... would be welcome if the raiders return. Can I insight check this man? Yeah, please do. Go ahead. Um, you're trying to ascertain if he's being truthful about his story? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make sure that he's not trying to waylay us in some way. Yeah. 18. Mm -hmm. uh, go on. Josh. Eight. I, w I was just going to say, uh, uh, surely the phrases are being a bit unreasonable because he has to get there and then get the message and then come back. I can't get it that. They didn't want they to didn't... give him time to go anywhere. But they've oh. allowed him till the And what would be the point of the ransom now? Because they assume the villagers can raise a thousand gold. Can... But, the, but it would still take time to send the thousand gold. There's no bank transfers. Uh, they just want the money given to the raiders that are on the beach next to their town. They are assuming the villagers can gather a thousand gold between them. Seems like well, a lot for like it's, 10 it's people. It's not a long ride to the... I mean, you've been riding for what... Four hours? Eight hours round trip? You should be able to get to the king. But anyway, uh, he looks at you and strong arms like yours would be welcome in Forge uh, if the raiders return. Are you willing? Uh, I want to look at Riddle and see what he thinks about this. I personally think we should check it out. He looks at you and, and commanded to be at your service and see you as fast as possible to where it is you wish to go. At the moment, I understood that that destination was carved, but I'm at your disposal. Decision is yours. Is it out of the way, or is there a path through there to our destination? We can go from Forge along the coast to Carve without a problem, but the riding will be rough, and the ferry that we've organized won't be available, so we'll have to find other crossing of a small river that perhaps we might even be able to ford it if we're low enough down to the beach. Uh, you guys can't see the river. It's too small to be relevant. It's over there some sorry it's over there somewhere um but yeah um we can get there most certainly and it is not far to forge perhaps only an hour i think this is worth checking out seems incredibly relevant i'm inclined to agree he looks at you um room. if the raiders are in the village are we to mount an assault Hey, there's only two of them? Well, they have hostages, though. That's fair. Ugh. How long can... ago were the hostages taken? To the best of your knowledge. Truth of the matter, my lady, I don't know. Um, but certainly the most recent was seen about three hours ago. Those taken were individuals who lived alone. Though Cell only than... left the tavern three hours prior to the afraid it's waking us up. Guys, we're the heroes of the realms. We can do anything. We've got this. I have another insight question. Yeah, sorry, you know, as you insight him, yeah, I, I did want to just clarify. He seems desperate. He seems distraught. And he definitely looks like a villager, not a raider. Um, even in the set of his body, you know, 
He's quite gaunt. Um, he's got that sort of well-weathered, leathery skin of a, uh, somebody who spends a lot of hours farming under the sun. Um, he certainly doesn't look capable of pulling or, or wielding a sword particularly well. Um, and his clothes are quite I just wanted poor. To... Go on. He said his wife was taken, but then he also said that those that were taken were those that lived alone. Uh, I'm really sorry. That's me making a mistake. His, his wife was not taken. Um, the wife that was taken was of the speaker in Carve. I've just crossed the two. Gotcha. Off. Sorry. Yeah, all of these individuals were taken from houses alone. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, he's completely lying, but because of me, not because he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're going to ride down to Forge, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so, as we ride on down to Forge. Uh, Forge is a tiny village. Um, it's uh, sort of 20, perhaps, hamlets. Um, most of them almost touching the beach. Um, they're pretty simple structures. Uh, Forge is known for being near to a mine. Um, and those who don't make their money at sea make their money from mining the iron that Forge is famous for. Um, as you ride down, you see that most of the townsfolk have gathered in the square um, around a well on the beach. There is no sign of any raiders, though you do see anchored out to sea, approximately three or four hundred feet out to sea, is a ship with a red painted key. Does this, does this red paint mean anything to you, Irina? So, um, they've got the people on the ship. We can use it, pause it right? Yeah. So, if they're giving them a plague or whatever, that must be capable of doing it, like, you know, port portably? Unless there's uh, a curse uh, and it's activated by something. Yeah. yeah. Mechanic question. I can't remember for Fine Familiar. Did we determine that? After the 100 feet, the familiar disappears, or that the mind connection is broken? The mind connection is broken. So I might be able to send a scout and come back to us. Indeed. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna okay. just snap my fingers. And it's not long Zephyr. before Zephyr comes winging back. Um, informing you that arrows were shot at them. That's to be expected. Um, Any? Yeah, uh, there's sort of an image um, imported, imparted to you. Um, imported, uh, like a file. <laughs> uh, imparted to you. Um, go ahead and give me a... It's going to be a religion check. Uh, perhaps with advantage, I think you, you would know about raiders at sea. Um, so yeah, an adv religion advantage. Okay, natural 20, 25. Beautiful. In that case, you'll get all three pieces of information. So the first thing worth noting is that there are the marks of three different clans upon the ship. Um, the Narwhal clan, um, the Seal clan, um, and uh, the... Raven Clan. Uh, sorry, Eagle Clan. Eagle Clan. Not Raven. Um, and then above that mark is a single mark of a Raven. Um, the Raven is not a clan in the God Rooms, and you know this. Um, so it is some other mark. And next to um, it is next a to very pale woman. Not alive, like it's a painting on the sail. Pale woman and a Raven. And then underneath is the marks of those three clans. Sorry, Lucas, go. Lucas, I was just going to ask, uh, the seal clan, is that double E or E A? Uh, it's an animal. Right? It's a seal. Um, is there a double E? The double There's E is the Pokemon. 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 Yeah, it's the Pokemon. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, all three are the animals. Sorry, Karina, back to the point. Um, you know this to be from the Raiders Isles. Um, you know these to be marks of the God Runes. Uh, you know the Raven is not a mark you're aware of. Nor is the pale woman. Um, 
Sorry, what were the animals? Narwhal, seal, and what was the third? Eagle. Eagle. Okay. Which are all tribes in the, the God Runes, which only Karina knows that. Um, the rest I'd of you mention would, it. Uh, perhaps Kai would have some knowledge of uh, the different clans that are available. I'm not sure in which direction his underwater city is. Um, if it's in that direction, he may have seen... So the Raider Isles are over there. Um, he may have seen some of the markings before, but probably paid very little attention to them. Um, yeah. There's three clans working together. As far as I know, that's extremely unheard uncommon. Of. Completely unheard of. Can I just double check? You guys haven't ridden into the city, into the village proper, right? At the moment, you're, what, standing up on the top, looking down at the villagers gathered by the well. Um, I think so. Sure. So something has brought these, um, separate clans together. Whatever that raven, pale woman mark is. Desperate for money. If. Are they? Are there um, any animals around? Just in the locale? Um, give me a perception check, see if you can see anything. That's a 23? Uh, there's a couple of gulls flying out over the bay. Um, and obviously you're riding a horse of the map now. Uh, are they close enough that if I cast uh, Speak with Animals with the Vero, the that range. it's the ranges of self? How loud he can shout. Yes, I, I, it depends on uh, the range. on It's because you're going to try and get Vero to speak to them, right? Yeah. Yeah, it depends on... Can Vero just go as far as he wants? He can, right? Yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah, cool. He's, Not a problem. He's, he's his own person. Yeah, he is his own person, indeed. Yeah, you can send him out to speak to the gulls. Okay. What do you want to say? Uh, uh, well, if if do you I'm have a playing mind link with Vero, uh, I can if I also use beast sense. Those are two concentration spells, or not? Uh, speak with animals is duration of 10 minutes and be sense is concentration yeah so you can maintain if you cast that you can maintain otherwise you're going to have to send Vera with all the information and let him deal with the problem alone and then return to you with the information if this is good because if I just send him by himself I'll try and eat those he'll gold. eat them yeah. <laughs> yeah that is exactly um, what he's going to do <laughs> yeah uh, so that's fine uh, yeah so I'll go I'll fl can he fly while he's small or is he yeah, walking he up <laughs> okay, yeah, so he'll Wait. fly. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, he'll fly on over there to the gulls, mm -hmm. and he will ask them if they know how long this ship's been there. Ship, 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 ship. That's what you're getting from them right now. <laughs> I'm just going to eat them. Great. Shit, shit, shit. Uh, uh, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> anyway, um, no, yeah. Um, you get the impression that they don't differentiate between one ship or another ship or any particular interest in the ships. Um, they're not edible, they know that much, but that's about it. Um, yeah. Uh, unfortunate. Um, useless fucking seagulls. Uh, Vera will tell you that meat shouldn't be questioned anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, regardless, are you going down to the villages? I think we have to. Wait, we wait, see, wait. Before we go down, do we see any raiders? Anybody looks like an outsider? No, no, I did tell you that originally. You don't see any raiders in sight apart from the ship out to sea. Oof. Before we go in, I'm going to use my uh, psionic power. Psychic whispers. So uh, three of us can communicate telepathically. You know, mm -hmm. just in case... Any, what? Are leaving out? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Kai knows message. Is that right? So I will put um, Luca. That was me also. Something is just in my eye right now. I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, Luca, Kai, Karina, and 
Gothic. Hmm? Do, do you have message? Card? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so it's you, Luke, and Galvac? Uh, it says choose up to three creatures. So Luca, Karina, and Galvac. You know, just in case we get oh, into some kind of three hosted... creatures That can communicate with you. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Right, okay. Sorry, I thought you had to be one of the creatures. Uh, okay. okay, very well. Um, so the four of you are capable of mind speech, and I'm assuming it's communicated to Kai that he wants to join in a group call while he should have bought the iPhone. <laughs> sorry, um, sorry. <laughs> but he needs to use I mean, um, it's fine. I mean, all of the messages have to be relayed through her anyways. Yeah. Okay, yes. good. Because that's how it works. I'm thinking if we're in a hostage situation, you know. But yeah, let's get down there. Cool. Um, so yeah, as you get down there, you notice um, most of them are arguing between themselves. Um, but the general message as you get close, that you overhear until you are in range, is um, that that there isn't a problem. Why would they pay the money when if they don't, they get their hostages back? And then somebody else keeps saying, well, you must have got the message wrong. As you approach, a woman turns to you. Um, she's got a fish knife in her hand, which is like, a short, a short, flat knife to a point with an eyelet in the middle. Um, and she sort of turns, waving it around, and... Who are you? We're, we're sent by the king. Ah. Uh, Iana? Got there already? That his name. Um, it was just good luck. We were already on our way. You were sent by the king before the problems happened? We were on a different mission. So you weren't sent here by the king? You were just... Listen. She sort of looks at you like, what the fuck? You were sent by the king, but not to us? So you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> We are investigating a situation similar to this. So... What do we do? If you want to speak to them, they went off in a skiff out to sea, but if you want to speak to them, we light that signal fire. Apparently. I mean, Uh, do Go ahead. I was just going to ask them if they have anyone who can fight in the village. An elder woman walks up. Um, she sort of looks to be in her 80s, um, leaning on a stick. For the sake of the village as a forge, boy, we'll all fight. Though few of us are trained in any way. Well I, well, I was thinking if the way we get them to come over to get off the boat and come talk to us is lighting the beacon, then we can have the villagers hide in... I don't know why I said villagers like that. <laughs> we can have the villagers, uh, like, waiting in the houses and stuff to ambush them. But they only sent two men, boy. Uh, well, you, you, never, back. you never know what two men can do. But if we attack them, they might kill our people, our friends. They'll never know, because they'll be dead. I don't much like that plan. What are you trying to achieve by ambushing the two raiders? Uh, to kill them? Or question (laughs) them and tie them up and question them. What? Kill them for what? Uh, For being bad people. That'll help. Um... Yeah. But we could also tie them up and, and, and... I think questioning them is not a bad idea. I'd like to investigate yeah. one of the homes that was invaded. Hmm. Ooh, good call. Well, and then she'll gesture towards the closest house. Um, that's Kerry's place. He's one of the fisher folk. It gestures towards what is effectively a glorified shack. Um, outside which a fish works. Um, are you looking for anything specific? Signs of entry, I will probably ritual cast uh, Detect Magic. See if I okay. get anything. Yeah, so, as you ritual cast Detect Magic, you get residual signs of illusion magic. Um, it was used in this vicinity a while ago. Um, it isn't currently present. Um, so, no vibrating rings. 
Is it um, inside the house or uh, outside? Yes, both. Um, give me an arcana check, see if you can get anything more specific there. 24. You think that perhaps they might have been invisible? Potentially under the cover of darkness as well. The spell, not the, not the weather effect. There's no signs of bloodshed, no signs of force. O obviously in little shacks like these, people don't have like traditional bolted locks on their door. Um, if you mention this, uh, the lady will tell you that one of the houses does have a bar on the door. The bar was in place with the door closed when they tried to regather all the villagers up. Um, so it was barred from the inside with the door closed, but the villager from inside was missing. Um, there are no signs of force or blood or any sort of fracas or contest from anybody who was taken. How the hell does that happen? Maybe they did it voluntarily or like not so voluntarily. Uh, you don't detect any signs of um, any magic used to gain uh, trust or to um, to force anybody to act. But you also uh, you're aware that casting detect magic three hours after the fact may not get you anywhere, mm -hmm. even if it was. So, hang on. Did you say they uh, disappeared whilst the door was still barred with them inside, or well, was the, it just the, not? So they were they went into their home, or so it is assumed. Nobody actually saw them enter their home, but. You know, there is no reason uh, for the man in question um, who was uh, left um, like this. Uh, left was right. a man who lived alone. Um, he's a miner. He's in his 40s. He's quite strong. Um, and he has the most secure house. His house, the door was barred from the inside and closed. But when the village started trying to round everybody up, um, they peered through the windows and could see that nobody was home. Windows is an interesting phrase in this time of, in this time and place. There is no glass on windows in this time. Instead, you would see wooden shutters that have been pulled across an open hole. Um, you, you would get a small man. You could probably get Winona or Luca through that gap, maybe even Kai. Um, but a, a man who's a miner, who's in his 40s, with no force and no signs of any... Uh, for Centurion, and again, the shutters were pulled closed, the, the village is forced them open. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything that's caused this. Um, but as you inspect the buildings, uh, Josh has just reminded me, we'll just take a short break. Hello, welcome back to the second half of our session. Um, so, uh, we were in Forge, and the decision was not known yet. Uh, you were checking out the, uh, the way in which different villages had been taken. Um, it's shitting it down with rain. It's about half past one in the morning. Uh, what's the plan, Stan? Or anyone and you really don't fucking know. Um, yeah, I'm going to speak telepathically to everyone and say, do we want to just see what happens when they return? Oh, we could, uh, we could dress up like a villager so we don't attract attention. Yeah, we can look inconspicuous off to the side. I mean, Be ready to... Dressed, I believe that they haven't already spotted Galthak and the rest of us as we entered town. Uh, as for me being inconspicuous? 300, 400 feet. Um, it is a distance, but if they have a spyglass, they've seen you. Alright. There is also the possibility of Kai and one other person going out to check out the boat. That is very risky, but it is an option. We have a helm of underwater action. Ooh. Wait, you want to go under the water? I don't necessarily want to go underwater, but it is an option. Just throwing it out on the table. Um, it's an option whoever wants to take the risk if you think it's worth it I don't know what you would do when you get to the, the ship when Nona said that and <laughs> said you many times implies she ain't going anywhere 
Have you established she can't swim? <laughs> oh yeah, true. That's probably not a you good. You would gain yeah. a swimming speed. That's what the helm does. I'm gonna have a panic attack under the water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's very fair. Galvac's inconspicuous. What do you think? It's like a sea lion. Inconspicuous like can be, yeah. It's about a one on a, on a scale of one to ten of how inconspicuous someone is, but sure. Um, Kai, do you have I any mean... desires to go close to the boat? Not really. I mean, <laughs> it was already pretty clear that they were going to shoot first, ask questions later, since they already shot at uh, Karina's familiar. But that's why you'd be under the water. <laughs> it's a stealth mission. Um, just out of that's... curiosity, what did you do with Zephyr when Zephyr came back? Uh, just snapped him away again. Right, okay. That's fine. Well, if no one's going under the water, are we just going to wait and see? I want to wait till dawn. So, uh, does this mean you're going to tell the villagers not to pay? They seem like they don't want to pay anyways, right? They're they don't just have like. A thousand gold. That too. I mean, is, I that have, iron, have, is that iron mine not profitable? It is. It is. But they don't keep much in terms of gold. Most of the, what they keep is in terms of things that they've purchased with the gold, right? Um, well, they're not rich. Uh, and they don't own the mine. They only work in it. I don't okay. like the thought of waiting this out and them just killing the hostages. I mean, they'll uh, kill them if we pay. The, the woman says, didn't you say that if we don't pay, they won't kill them? Isn't that the idea? <laughs> this is all a very strange situation yeah. for My us. My nephew's too. out there. What it Karina, says it doesn't it, make any sense. Karina, it's fine. If something bad happens, you can just turn back time. Can't turn and back we people. will find a way. You can turn back time? Why not just do that now, to before the time they were taken? If I could, I would. Oh, well. If only she could find a way. No, no, I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Well, fuck you guys, man. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it's a serious moment. Some people are possibly going to die, all right? Okay. So, if we hold on till dawn, in fact, something happens before dawn. Um, Iana, the gentleman who was um, who was riding past you, uh, comes riding back. He is clutching a small wooden chest. He looks exhausted. He comes in. I've spoken with the king and his advisor. He gave us the money, but begged us not to pay. Said we were to defer to the group that had arrived. It hopes that we can put the gold towards a better use if our friends and family are returned to us all as they should be. He also bid us all be quiet about this and tell not of the tragedy that's befallen us. Not sure I like the order, but it is from our king. You can see that a couple of them are sort of like shocked that the king's given them a thousand gold. Um, especially those who haven't got family members out there are kind of like, well, this is a win-win situation. Uh, <laughs> but uh, regardless, it's not long before dawn. The sun rises over the sea. Uh, were they were they supposed to come with the villagers at dawn? The villagers, if the payment wasn't made at by dawn, the villagers would be returned. Is the deal? It's too late to make a choice now. Done. Yeah. The rain starts to die down as the morning rises. 
you look out and see a boat. It appears that it was let out the other side of the red ship and comes round the ship. It looks like little more than a, a raft. And standing on it appear to be 14 people dressed in rags. From this distance, you can't see much other than that. And they come closer. Go ahead. Who, who's the most likely to be able to see them at this distance? Karina, you have a spyglass, don't you? Yes. That's sort of cool. As you look through, um, you see that two of them appear to be tussling with each other. And in fact, one of the larger folk is knocked into the sea. Begins swimming towards the raft, clambers back on. You notice that there's no kinship between these people. They don't seem to be grouped together or huddled for warmth. They don't seem to be conversing in any way other than bickering. Sure enough, as the ship, boat, sorry, rolls in, the ship, the red ship, sails out to sea. See this. I would have been doing my best um, during the night to tell people not to rush up to anybody who were to come back. Well, uh, it, it's fair to say that all of them were sort of in that mind anyway. And indeed, as the village folk step back, only the old lady comes forward. And she says to you, If they are diseased in some way or hurt or cursed, I would accept my fate. I am due to die soon anyway, and I've lived a long, fruitful life. My nephew is out there. I want to greet them. See how they are. Will you allow it? If it means the end of my life, then so be it. Rather not come to that. I too. I'm going to look around at the other members of my party to question if they feel like we're all going to go out there with her. Is that the general feel, or are we just going to send the old lady out? <laughs> I'm going to stand. Gonna... <laughs> I'm going to stand 60 feet away. Yeah, Lu Lucas uh, will, with a sad look in his eye, watch from a distance. <laughs> okay, so we're all keeping our distance, right? But you're going to let the old lady go forward. The wizard wants to go oh, in, but the wizard will I'm... die. <laughs> no, I've got, like, if one of them, like, tries to attack her, I'm ready. A throwing so blade, unless you know. Gonna harm her, you'll let her greet them. Okay. I'll be thirty foot behind her. I'm okay. also gonna be thirty feet. Okay. We've got a little like old lady, Karina Kai, <laughs> Winona, <laughs> Luke. <laughs> I have reasons. Galthak. Galthak. By the Where is Galthak? Sure, I'll be with. I'll be with the majority of the rest of the people because, uh, yeah. By the time the raft reaches the beach, two men are actively fighting each other. And you see one bite the other one on the shoulder. Um, uh, eventually, after he sort of seems to win the fight, he comes away clutching the man's bare cloak, leaving the man in nothing but a tiny rag. He looks victorious. As the raft comes in, there is a small young boy perhaps 15, 16 years of age, um, might be muscled, who runs from the raft away from the rest and down the beach towards the woman. As he gets close, you hear him quite clearly say to her, Give me your cloak. I'm cold. If he reaches out to her aggressively, I'm holding a hold person. He says it. She takes her cloak and she holds it out to him. And your earrings! At this point, the others come past him. You can see they quickly begin to herd towards the woman to grab what they want. But a couple of them break away from that group, looking towards the village, as if they want to make towards it and grab what they can. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm assuming I can't do this four times, like, one right after the other, but I'd like to shoot off as many ensnaring strikes as I can. <laughs> Please describe ensnaring strike for me. Uh, can you click the display and VTT oh, button and then describe what your 
interpretation of it is. Thank you. Yeah, so I would be um, uh, letting Vero in chant my arrows with some, uh, I guess, paralyzing that, that's um, lightning. I need it. Um, Josh, do you want to do that knowing it is going to harm them quite severely? Uh, yeah, so they're crazy. Okay. Okay. Well, 1d6 of damage. Uh, Aim for the legs. Commoners typically have between 1 and 4 hit points. You yeah, I'll take my chances. They're okay. crazy. Does anybody wish to prevent that or try any other means first? I will allow you to try non-combat means first. So whole person um, was <clears throat> ordered. Uh, I could, training. quite frankly, just grab a bunch of people and try to hold like three, four people. Okay. But... Yeah, I'll just yell out, hold them down. Okay, so you're going to cast hold person. Has anybody else got anything you wish to do before combat uh. happens? Um, I don't have anything to stop, but if there's, if they're like near enough, I'm gonna, I want to test, uh, cast Detect Thoughts. Ooh. Are you casting this on one specific, or are you casting this on yourself to get their surface thoughts? Um, well, so, so initially I'm casting on myself and then I'm going to focus on one person. Yeah. Um, so as you initially cast it on yourself and you get the sort of surface thoughts, most of them seem to be hungry. Um, they seem to be like jaybirds almost, distracted by bright things and pretty things and nice things. And things that would give comfort. Food, warmth, cloak, earrings, those sorts of things. There's no sign of any kinship. There's no sign of them knowing that they've been returned home. There's no sign of them understanding why they're here the only thoughts that you can detect are their immediate needs even when you focus in on one specific person he seems to have no thoughts beyond his immediate needs one of them looks jealously at a sword that is at Luca's hip other than that you do have a sword at your hip right? I have a rapier right, right. I have a rapier yeah, yeah, yeah cool um, beyond that you get nothing. The whole person will work. Um, Galthak, if you do attempt to stop them from getting close to the woman, the woman will attempt to step past you to her nephew and lay her hands upon him. She I mean, I won't him, stop her with him, but some of the others, grabs sure. him by the shoulders and she yells at him, Jason, Jason! It's me, it's me, it's okay, it's okay! But he shoves her back quite violently out of his way as he pursues the sword at Luca's hip coming up towards him. You're going to ensnaring strike him, yeah? Give me a I mean, I wish that it wouldn't do damage, uh, but okay. an arrow, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's why I asked, like, your way of... Uh, well, it depends which one you cast whole person. Well, I assumed you cast it on the boy that you were first mentioning, like, the young boy. Okay, is that not who was... No, okay. no, the, the nephew's sort of in his 50s. She's 80. Um, yeah, the young boy doesn't appear to be attached to any of them. Damage. Yeah, my damage. <laughs> Shall I go full out and just level two and do two d six instead? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's really deal. Deal, deal guarantee it's, it's a kill. It's it's more the uh it's more the attack damage, Josh. Oh right, yeah, shit. So that's three uh, snaring damage. I won't shot sh sharp shooter. That's fine. No, that's I'll roll. Nice. No, I'll that's... Roll... I just oh, need yeah, I'll roll the hit. hit. I don't need a hit roll, I just need damage. Oh, uh, so maybe I should shop shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, 10. Yeah, as your arrow takes him, um, you can see that he's been through trials and tribulations. The villagers sort of... Uh, uh, the, the real villagers behind you sort of surge forward at your actions and then seeing what's going on, step back. One man looks at you all and sort of nervously steps in front of Winona Kai and uh, Karina. Calls out, Lef! Olin! Come on! Come home! Let's get you sorted out! Nobody responds to the calling of names. And it won't be long before the villagers will start actively trying to hurt the woman take everything from her and return hostages. 
If they're going to start hanging her, I'm going to start shooting off arrows. Well, it's first of all up to Galfak. Galfak, will you start responding with force? Um, if they're going to if they're going to hurt her, then um, I've got no no choice really. Um, I will start throwing people around, throwing them onto the ground, trying okay. to knock everyone out I can with my bare fists. I'm yeah. not going to try to kill people. As Galfak lays but... into them, they continue to attempt to bite you, scratch you, um, stamp on your feet, um, gouge out your eyes. They don't fight like humans. They fight like beasts. Lots of them gouging savages. out my eyes, considering my stature. Yeah, they can't, they're not achieving anything because of your size, stature, and strength, but you notice that they're fighting like beasts, not like people. And eventually, after all but one unconscious, there is just a young boy held by the whole person's staff. You can see the old woman has tears in her eyes. She looks at you, Luca. She moves over to the body of her nephew. She puts her hand to his throat. Was he in there? He didn't know me. Was he in there? Was he in where? My nephew, what? was that him? He didn't know me. You, what did they do to you, him? You tell me, I don't know him for Tom Dickerari. Luca. Seems the answer to that is she no. Her hand over his face, closing his eyes. And she walks over to the young boy. Should we have paid? She caresses his cheek. Looks to Galfak. Can you restrain him? I will take I him. I can. Home, and I will feed him, and I will be gentle. And I will love him until he comes back to himself. Unless you say otherwise, have you some other thought, some other plan? How old is this boy, or how strong, how uh, you know, capable uh, with force does he look? Not at he's all. He's currently held. But no, no, I mean, so, no, if he were, he's fifteen years old and he's thin. He's lightly built. He's, he scavenges for rocks and crabs at the pool. He's an orphan. His parents died. Um, he was looked after at the tavern until recently. They got him his own place only a few months ago. She tells you. There may be a chance. There's no guarantees. But there is one thing I can do. If you decide this is right. What's that? Grab some of the hemp and I'll, I'll put out some of the hemp and rope. Mm -hmm. Look to restrain him primarily by his hands. Yeah. And secure them further around his torso. As restrained as I can reasonably make him. So his hands are sort of tied up under his chin? Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's perfect. She we don't know how long will this is going to last for. Home? Okay, I will. I'll just hoist him up, up on my shoulders and... On the way up, the whole person's spell... It is a minute, by the way. Mm -hmm. The whole person's spell will run out. Um, he sort of looks at you and he quite plaintively says... My hands hurt. This hurts. Get him off! Sorry, boy. It's gotta be done. He starts to try and kick at you. And at one point he leans over and tries to bite at you, but all he can get is like the back of your shoulder blade. And then he I'm starts just not really gonna care about him trying to do that. Between his wrists. Once you put him down, he sort of lets his arms down and looks at you. Kai, how long does it take for A minute. Okay. Um... He looks at you, Galfak, and then he looks to the old woman. Please. It hurts. My wrists. Please. Take them off. She looks at you. And then walks up past you. It's alright. After a few minutes, we will. Hey, you must be hungry. Let me put some stew on for you. And she moves over to the stove and begins to start cooking the stew. She doesn't attempt to unbind him. He looks to you, Galfak. Why, why have you bound me? Do 
You saw what happened to the others, yes? You saw what they did? The others around you? My wrist hurt, please. Why have you bound me? It'll be alright, boy. I'll fix you. Let me go! I won't say anything further to him. I'll just... He runs towards you and he starts he trying to hit you with his wrists. Give me a perception check, Alfred. Oh, sorry, give me an insight check. Um, like, sure, sure. Same thing, just same dice is fine. 14, Oh, okay, I uh, will use the other one in. That was um, a 17, He yeah. looks over at the table and at the woman, and you see him go towards the table, and you notice that there is a knife on the table. It looks like it's there for chopping bread or something. Sorry, say once more. Um, he looks over at the, what appears to be a knife on the table that's for chopping bread, and then at the, the old woman, and he begins to make a dash towards the table. You quickly realize his intentions to pick up the knife from whatever way he can. I'll uh, sweep the knife away so uh, as quick as I can so he can't get to it. He turns to you. Please, sir, my wrist. As you all witness this, um, Kai, although <laughs> you hear the words you know, of him saying, like, please, sir, or whatever, you see from his mood outbursts that. He only seems to be being nice to see if he can get what he wants. There seems to be no soul for this man, for this boy. And with that, we'll end. Oh, no. I am. Dun dun dun! Oh no! I pulled it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, we'll come to MVPs. Oh, that's a bit depressing for MVPs. Let's not have Shinders next week. Um, <laughs> let's have something a bit nicer than that. Um, yeah. Uh, who did I play to last? Michaela, uh, your MVP. Um, okay. Wait, I'm not ready. <laughs> Can you give me a moment? Yeah. Uh, Jamal? I'll tell you what, I'll kick it off first. Um, <laughs> With Josh going a uh, thousand gold pieces instead of ten thousand, God, they're playing Monopoly. Um, <laughs> oh God, that yeah. was pretty good. Um, I like that. Um, I also uh, love the idea that in this situation of devastation, of realizing that they have no soul to them, uh, Luca just turns around and goes, "I don't know, from Tom, Dick, or Harry." Um, probably the most insensitive thing ever said in a desperate tragic situation. Asked about. But it was quite amusing. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, okay. okay. I thought of something now. Mm -hmm. Uh, mine is, um, are Karina's, um, 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 Phantom Steed. And, uh, yeah, letting me ride after I fell off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so embarrassingly. <laughs> um, Jamal. Yeah. Um, the amount of facepalm moments that we had, like things like seal has it spelled, just the, there's so much facepalm. Yes, um, if I could, I would. Bitch. Um, speaking Among of other which, things. Sora, your MVP. <laughs> um, I, I gotta give it to the seagulls. They were so completely useless. <laughs> ship, 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 ship. <laughs> oh Sorry. Accurate. But, yeah, um, Josh. Uh, so I have a couple. Um, one being that when you said that um, they liked, you know, comfort things and shiny things, I was like, oh no, they've put the souls of magpies in these people. <laughs> um, magpies, that's what I was looking for. I said jaybirds, didn't I? I couldn't, my brain would yeah. be up. Yeah. yeah um, also, I, I really like the whole like uh, creepiness of them. Very like vampire esque. Like we can't come in unless you invite us. Kind of creepiness. <laughs> um, what? No, it's alright. I I'm not quite sure which bit of them gave that vibe, but that's alright. I'm glad that you got it. Well, because the kid was like, "Please, sir, help me," oh, and then sense. I yeah, yeah, yeah. killed them. Yeah, no, hundred yeah. um, percent. Jay. Um, um, sorry, Josh. Go on. Go on. <laughs> 
Uh, and I was also gonna uh, just uh, say uh, uh, Alora calling out Luca for being insensitive. But he didn't know what to tell her. He doesn't know if he's inside or not. She wasn't necessarily just speaking to you, but yes. Jay. Josh's Monopoly joke. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then the um, Michaela's little if I could, I would. Um, oh yeah, when we started yeah. doing the uh, the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, obviously, there's a few jokey MVPs in there, but I do want to sort of make sure that um, obviously it's a, a little bit of a darker moment in the campaign. Um, I, just in case anyone needs any clarification, the appearance is that they are now soulless, um, and that is where we'll pick up next week. Um, what are we gonna do, guys? We've also got another couple of little oh, bits yeah. and bobs mm-hmm. as well. Um, the first one I've got is um, uh, the fact that Luca is now annoying small person. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what do you want, small person? And then he, he goes on to the marital problems. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think that's where we're gonna call it, though. Um, we are going to. Are we? Yeah, do you know what? I think we will. We're going to head over to an old friend of mine. I don't know how long PT's got left. Uh, but no, we're not. Anymore. We're going to go to Blue Box RPG. I've just seen them live. Um, so if you guys would like to say goodbye. Bye. 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 Uh, we shall see you soon. Uh, Blue Box RPG are a lovely group of people. Um, they have weekly streams playing various games. Please give them some love. We'll see you soon. Bye.